Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be XTO versus Machine Game 2. Going to color swap because I feel like it. Part of B-Cell Season 14, Hasu League, Round of 16, Group D. The final match of the Round of 16 to see who advances to the Round of 8. Machine starting the upper right hand corner as the Blue Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have I Love XTO as the Red Terran. This is on Eclipse. And on Eclipse, honestly, XTO is going to have to pull out something really magical in order to pull this off. It looked like in game one, trying to go for an off-tempo marine attack, Machine was already prepared for it, then trying to follow it up with some sort of fantasy-style build with the Valkyries in the air, and just didn't have sufficient defense, honestly, to deal with what Machine was pulling out. And Machine just, yeah, I think he... What I do appreciate about Machine previous match is sometimes he's just allowed his opponents to linger. That time, realizing he had the opportunity to end the match and ending it, forward barracks here for XTO. Let's see if it goes for more of the, the same. On Eclipse, this is the map that everybody's played, and Machine is one of those guys who's known for just having kind of a mechanical build that he goes into, and he plays it solidly, and he perfects it, and Eclipse is that ladder map that's been in the pool absolutely forever. Looks like Machine potentially opting, so not going, so going for the 12 hatch, to open rather than for a nine pool. It looks like XTO with that forward barracks looking for a front door seal. Looks like he's probably going to get it. Machine grabbing that natural expansion. The machine going for early economic aggression. But XTO may be going to go for something similar to game one for a faster command center. And I think it might pay off. Overlord and drone scout scooting down. First SCV scout making its way across. First marine being built and a supply depot to try to cap the wall. One advantage of this build is you do have more, you can kind of block that drone out. But one disadvantage is, is it's not like you're hiding the command center for long. That overlord can still make its way across the field. The overlord needing to get out of the way of that first marine getting aggressive. SEV once again confirming hatch read. This time, not a lot of drones pulling off the line. One thing for Machine, though, is it's going to be a minute before he can get, before he feels safe moving this Overlord. That SCV, these Marines getting aggressive once again. Another SCV coming off the line. This time, Machine not getting aggressive with his drones. So potentially, kind of a quick little run attack. And I don't know that the Overlord has spotted these troops coming in as well. So now the drones pulled off the line to engage the two SCVs on the front. Zerglings being produced. Machine almost able to drill past, does lose one drone. And XTO looks like Machine just gonna exit the natural expansion, go ahead and do a little bit of damage, trying to get the bunker up, but I do not think this is gonna be in time. The question is, is the timing with the Zerglings? So the Zerglings able to group up. The bunker, three-force finish, Machine being very patient with this. Now grouping in some pinned in SCVs and Marines and repelling that. Is the bunker even going to get canceled? There's a Marine waiting nearby. He was hoping to sneak and tap it, but Machine very diligent, pushing through, able to wipe it out. Cancellation there. So Marines expended, bunker expended, only one drone down. And Machine already on his way to the third hatchery. This is looking like a repeat of game one. Extracted. Extracted? Extractor. Being produced. The drones once again resaturate that natural expansion to Machine. With some map control, also a threat. Looks like we do have a command center being built behind this. And I'm wondering if Machine... Yeah, okay, now that the Zerglings are in place, going to go ahead and escort that Overlord towards the natural expansion. Exio grabbing his gas, but that was a lot of Marines that aren't going to be in place for the follow-up defense against Mulisk. Any sort of three-hatch play. And I'm, looks like Machine is going to go for Lair before speed this time. I assume he's going to go just for a straight three hatch or the three hatch play before the Marines pulling out. Oh, that overlord is exposed, but they need to be careful attacking that overlord with the Zerglings nearby. So getting distracted and cleaned up again. Zerglings actually able to breach into the natural expansion and actually a Zergling able to confirm and potentially disrupt the natural expansion. 
So that's almost a full, I think that might be practically a full control group of Marines that have been taken care of. The Zergling able to confirm the command center, delay its production a little bit, but critically there are not a lot of Marines left. A factory being plopped down, two factories being plopped down for XTO. And if he's gonna try to play mech from here, that is a tall order. His lair is now finished. Machines economy, he's ahead in workers. If you're going for factory, if you're going for mech play, usually you want to be economically ahead. The other thing is his mech is slow. It is slow to get sufficient Goliaths out. So I don't know that XTO is going to have any sort of baseline defense to deal with what machine is tossing out. Machine and firm control here. Evolution chamber, spire as well. SCV wandering out. Zerglings camped at the top ramp to maybe deny that scout. SCV going to wander into that natural expansion. Zerglings running everywhere just to make sure a sneaky base wasn't out there. Drones actually plugging up the ramp to go ahead and deny information as well. Nice play right there. Don't give them anything. It looks like that SCV is going to get wiped out. So it's going to be four hatch mutalisk. Probably fold back to Hydralist and maybe more of the same. Terran Factory with Machine Shop down. But here's the thing, as far as it, that's four Marines on the front. And one turret. That is not a lot of defense. And Machine at least going to be able to get four Mutalisk as the Spire finishes. But honestly doesn't even know, need to go Mutalisk. In fact, it looks like he's invested in Carapace 1 already. Instantly going for Carapace for Mutalis, potentially to go for a later tech switch. I think he feels comfortable enough where he's like, okay, I could end the game right now, but I'm not even going to worry about it. Vultures produce, so looks like they want to try to peck away at that Overlord, but it's only four Marines in a bunker. And this is kind of a clever play by Machine. He's like, okay, I know you potentially think you need to deal with my Mutalis, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let you go ahead and overbuild to go ahead and try to defend everything. And in the meantime, I'm just going to back her up. However, this might play into XTO's hands because right now the Vultures out here potentially surprising machine. There is, yeah, additional sunk colonies that are going to be required to go ahead and defend this. A first mule is being produced potentially just to deal with these Vultures that are headed to the north. You have some drones blockading the ramp, some mutalists there waiting on that creep colony to morph. But machine still economically in a great position. Is he going? He's going up to five hatchery here. It looks like he's going to play this as though he was playing against the Protoss. Evolution Chamber also blockading the front. But I think now he realizes, okay, this is going to be more of a versus mech situation. Even in that race, though, he has got a significant lead, and XTO's attacks have been repelled time and time again, honestly, without much avail. Three factories, Goliath starting to pump. Plus one weapons on the way. Let's see if Machine has the wherewithal to go ahead and he... I think he already had this spotted because, again, he upgraded that plus one weapons very rapidly. Now moving with the Mutalisks. Able to delay that fourth factory. Able to confirm the factory count as well. So actually, I think he had a read on this way before I did. He's like, you know what? This is going to be mech play. I can sense it. Or maybe he just knows XTO style. Overlord's able to put Machine in the red, which does hurt a little bit. Machine's about even on workers here. Has a nice seal in the front. Already has some Sutton colonies at various locations. Is mining significantly off three bases. Looks like he's going to go ahead and grab a fourth, which he can do. Hydralist in and Hive close to being finished. And the Mutalisks moving up. However, and that's going to force the Goliaths back. Machine does need to be careful not to overextend. He does have... I can't show you. Carap Carapace 1 is not yet upgraded, but it is even Mutalus versus... I think there's as many Mutalus as there are Goliaths right here, which is a bad situation for XDO. And on top of that, yeah, now plus one armor finishing, which means these Goliaths, the plus one weapons, isn't going to be as much of a factor. XDO with the supply lead over a machine does have that fourth base. Hive is up, and if a Defiler Mound drops, 
As soon as Dark Swarm is in play, that is going to neutralize everything. However, XTO might have an opportunity here as he's got that full control group. That fourth base is in production, might be able to strike some damage there. There's the Defiler Mount. So if Machine can hold out for a little bit, and it looks like he's might just have enough bulk to do so. As soon as that Defiler is in place, that'll be game. But he needs to stop these Goliaths in the interim. Moving up, diving on top of it, full control group of Mulas plus some Zerglings. Engaging, nice split stutter step from XTO. Pulling the Goliaths to the left, to the right, and to the south, but Machine has overwhelming numbers. Easily able to repel that attack. That fourth hatchery now going to come online. XTO trying to grab what I'm going to call a naked base. The Mutalisks pushing into that location, though. A machine instantly responding to it. Don't think this is going to get salvaged. More Marines and Goliaths trying to move in. They're going to have to work through their own some city. That's going to be a canceled command center. Or a blown up command center, potentially. Machine actually exiting. It's so going to leave it for this moment, but that leaves no defenses or very thin defenses at the main. And Machine doesn't need to press the issue. Consume halfway finished. Some Hydralisks out here. You can go ahead and... Is he working on Lurker Tech as well? Yep. Well, no, he's going for... He's going to go for a Hydra Swarm attack. XDO trying to get that third base up and running. He is up on workers. But Machine just has a sailing economy and is one step away from being in a position with his tech lead to neutralize a lot of XDO's troops. Plus one armor going to be here momentarily. Machine now diving in, again picking off the SCV. More SCVs moving forward to complete the command center and get a third base up and running. XTO shelled up, hoping he can just continue to max things out. But as that has happened, Nidus Canal in place to help to defend the fourth. Another hatchery planting out. Ultralis Cavern, all of the tech is here. Plague being researched. As though Dark Swarm wouldn't be enough. Honestly, a single Dark Swarm here, this entire base is gone. With just the Zerglings. Felt like putting some uh, extra smack on that one. The Zerglings, for some reason. Mutalis continuing to press in. Eating some damage. Realizing those troops are out of position. Going to go ahead and check the main. There's a lot of Goliaths there. Just kind of scoping things out, and honestly, this might just be to do as much damage as possible and free up some some, some supply at this stage. SCV's continuing to dwindle for XTO. It looks like the rest of these Mulists are going to get cleaned up. The Zerglings and Hydralisks being spotted. Wow, Machine actually staying on top of the upgrades behind this. Level 2 Carapace, level 1 weapons. And now you got the Defilers lined up here at the four, or, sorry, at the 11 o'clock location, just waiting to join the attack force. This plus some Zerglings and I think some Ultralis potentially. It's going to be game cap. So Machine really wanting to show the entirety of the Zerg army momentarily in the form of Hydralisks, Defilers, Lurkers, and Ultralisks. Even grabbing yet another base. This is the definition of one year ahead, get more ahead. The Defiler's waiting in the wings to potentially drop some plague. Zergling's fielding out. Yeah, and honestly, swarm plus plague, and that will be that. I'm not sure. XTO has nothing to defend against this. He doesn't have any mines in location. He doesn't have any fire bats on the ground. It is just Goliaths. There's the initial consume. So this is going to be one of those... Textbook Zerg attacks. Swarm on the ground, allowing those Zerglings to just peel forward. Machine actually splitting off attack forces to allow Hydralisks to get amidst the swarm. If XTO can walk into that swarm, would be some help. So attacking on two fronts, and you can see, okay, it looks like there's a siege tank out, but still not sufficient. Swarm is a game changer. Nine o'clock location now. All of the Hydralists able to push in. Machine not even sending all of his attack forces. Maybe waiting on some Ultralists behind this. 
literally swarming in. Exio's base is breached. And honestly, as soon as I saw the swarm, if I was him with only having a single siege shank, I would call the GG right there. It looks like there was some plague drop as well, which caught a lot of these troops. And Machine now kind of piecemealing his forces in. He can afford to do so as XTO is down to 72 supply and plummeting. Mech is expensive and you need additional bases and gas to make it work. More siege tanks coming out to try to deal with that Dark Swarm. But there's plenty of Hydralists to just punch through. Dark Swarm in your natural expansion with Hydralists there is never a good sign. The Hydralists is just peeling back out of siege tank range. And Machine now at double the supply. The Hydralists actually not able to attack under Swarm themselves. Unfortunately targeting the wrong units, but some Zerglings coming in as well. Yeah, the Swarm continually being dropped here. I'm just waiting for... Yeah, there's the first Ultralisk to join the fray. XTO, I am shocked he is not GG'd at this stage. Maybe holding out hope against hope, realizing it is a tournament situation, just wanting to fight out as much as he possibly can. Moving out some Vultures. He's now in survival mode. He needs to just get things in place where... To just not die, let alone get ahead in this match. Tanks getting picked off. Zerglings with adrenal upgrades shoot through those tanks pretty rapidly. Actually, I don't even know that they're adrenal upgraded yet. Ultralisk joining the fray. So it's Ultralisk, Hydralisks. The latent bit of a storm still there. Machine able to clean up the front. In the red, but it doesn't matter because he's way ahead in supply. Ultralisk plus Dark Swarm able to walk up on top of those siege tanks on the upper ridge and that natural expansion getting obliterated. SCVs in flight with Ultralisks with their huge tusks waiting. A very manner GG bro. Good luck in the next round. From XTO, he is eliminated from BSL Season 14. Machine will advance to the round of eight. Hope you guys enjoyed it overall. And we've got an exciting lineup from here. Hope you, hopefully, we'll see if we can ex I can finish. I don't know that I'm going to make it. I think uh, BSL Season 15 is going to start before I'm able to get all of Season 15 finished. But thank you guys for listening. We are going to keep going.